So I just picked this up over the holidays. A neat little 1983 RCA color TV, 13 inch. This is a model EGR338WR. The W is for this beautiful faux walnut finish. The R refers to the remote control. And uh, yeah, this is a, a neat little TV. I really like these RCAs. These were everywhere when I was a kid. Uh, our family TV was a 26 inch uh, RCA console, of course, branded XL100 as they all were. Uh, I remember the 20 inch ones, 19 and 20 inch versions, had a ton of different variations of them. But yeah, they were very common around here. And uh, yeah, of course, when I got this, it sort of worked and then stopped working. Uh, when I first got it, it would tune in channels 3 and 4, so I could hook a VCR up, but the UHF channels were just snow, nothing. It, it was tuning in snow, it was giving you something, but it wasn't a channel. Uh, eventually, the tuner completely crapped out, and I lost all picture, and thought, oh, you know, maybe something in the uh, sweep circuitry or the video circuitry inside the TV died. And uh, turns out, nope, it was uh, just the tuner that had failed. Some stations were showing snow and some were just blank. If you crank the screen, you could see the retrace lines, but there was just no signal there. And I went through a whole bunch of learning about the tuner and trying to diagnose this or that. And what ended up fixing it is taking the, it's called the MST board out and completely reflowing every solder connection. Uh, the tuner in this is a, a PLL phase lock looped tuner. Basically, it um, has a feedback loop. It uses varactor diodes, kind of like the older electronic tuners that uh, RCA had, where you just had one dial. And with those, instead of having a bunch of physical connections in the knob that would go and connect a series of inductors and capacitors and stuff like that, it would uh, each preset was just sending a voltage to a varactor diode to then adjust the capacitance and tune in the channel. Basically this tuner takes it a step further and uh, has a feedback loop to basically tune in the frequency of where the channel should be, but then it locks onto the phase of that channel and provides a precise voltage to the varactor diode so you lock in perfectly. Taking a look at this TV, front controls are very basic, volume, channel, these are for uh, adding any racing channels because this has a memory preset. You'll see I have all my channels programmed in here. And if I wanted to say add a channel, if I hold down the lock button, it will let me tune through deleted channels and I can just hit add and now it's there. And if I were to unmute, so here that a channel that's added is unmuted. But if it's deleted or erased, then there's, uh, it mutes the channel. So if I go add or erase. So let's... There we go. Erased all the channels. Remute. One downside with this is it's got one of those speakers on the side that a lot of these smaller sets had just to save space was never really a big fan of that. Also, it has this little light sensor that goes and lowers the contrast control in uh, low light environments. The idea being, hey, you turn the lights off in the room, this will automatically adjust. These were kind of a gimmick. They went away towards the mid 80s and I'm happy that they did. I know the TV that uh, we had growing up was basically identical for the tuner controls but it didn't have this stupid little eye thing. Taking a look down here, brightness, contrast, color, tint, controls along the bottom, pretty common on a 13 inch set. Have a headphone jack on the side here. On the back, of course, it's an RCA from the 80s, so you have quarter inch drive for the screws. A little place to put your rabbit ear antennas. It's the connections on the back. Uh, is your VHF connection and your UHF connection. A switch for the tuner to go between normal, so uh, broadcast UHF and cable, or cable frequencies. And these little guys, the twin lead for VHF, are just connected to a matching transformer inside. And then the ground is tied together, so it's tied to here from the matching transformer. 
but the uh, signal coming from the matching transform is just connected to this wire. So you just push this in there and that connects these through a matching transformer to the VHF in. Simple. I think Zenith did something similar on their sets, except this F connector was on a little pigtail that hung off the back of the TV. And then you had a mating connector on the back of the TV that went through a matching transformer to the screw terminals. So you just take a little pigtail and instead of connecting your coax up to it, you plugged it in, it just slipped into the back of the TV and then hooked these up. Same concept, different implementation. Got my matching transformer right here. Taking a look at the back here. Got the voltage and wattage. Uh, you'll notice that the remote set uses more power. This actually draws 10 watts when it's powered off, which is kind of high by today's standards. Here, focus and screen controls. There's the model, serial, CSA. Here's your uh, picture controls. So your bias. Here's your uh, service mode switch. So it cuts out the vertical. So you just get a very faint horizontal line. And you use that line to dial in these bias controls so that you just get a nice little faint line. Give yourself a nice good grayscale. Uh, I actually had to turn the screen down on this slightly because the bias control for green was already bottomed out. I needed to go lower in order to get this. It had kind of a greenish picture. Uh, I believe that's probably capacitors because it's weird that you need to turn the screen down. Yep. Vertical hold, and sharpness or peaking control. This is centered. I didn't ever touch this vertical. Vertical height here. I haven't touched that either. It's already perfect. And your drive controls for your red, blue, and your green. Again, haven't touched those either. Everything is, all these controls are just about in the middle. And screen's got a lot of room. Focus was perfect. I tried tweaking a little bit, but it was bang on. And of course, these nice pegs to wrap your power cord around. Ignore the weird moire lines. That's just the camera. It's tuning in all the channels just fine, which is nice. Um, yeah, I, I use v UHF in my house for all the internal channels. So it's, what's especially fun about this remote is this is near identical to the remote for my childhood TV, which I actually saved. Here it is. Don't have the TV anymore, but kept the remote. And as you can see, it's in rough shape. Uh, I have the lens cover here. It's fallen off and gone somewhere. Uh, you can see uh, all the fixes I did. The little cover, little uh, clip to hold the battery cover broke off. And, you know... 13 year old me hot glued a chunk of plastic in there. And I'm actually very proud of my childhood self because that, that works a treat. And this lasted probably another 10 years, 15 years after I did that. Um, remotes are a little bit different. Uh, the, the lettering, because this is an earlier one is just uh, masking, just ink masked on here. It's actually like stamped on the newer remotes so the ink doesn't wear off as well. Also this one has a color track branding. This may have had an XL100 branding on it when it was new. But also the batteries. And this caught me off guard. So this takes three AA batteries. So four and a half volts. All the remotes that I have seen of this style took two batteries. In fact, I have another one because of course I do. And this one seems to be the same style as my other newer one. It takes two batteries. So yeah, interesting little tidbit there. Just technology getting newer. Here's the inside. Yeah, I figured this was in a smoker's home decades ago and those people since stopped smoking. But if you really run this for a while and stick your face right in there, you smell it. And look at that. Look at that. The dust collected in here is like black. Just like cigarette, cigar, black. Uh, yeah. Resoldered, refloated some connectors in here. 
and reflowed literally the entire circuit board in this MST, which is apparently a very common failure. And she's working a treat, VHF and UHF. The CTC-107C. Most of the stickers are falling off on the inside here. And here's the tag inside the case. This is along the top. As you can see right there, that's where the high, that's yeah, right above the flyback. Wow. So, fun little look at this TV. I did do uh, some spot checking of capacitors in the uh, sweep circuitry, in the IF, when I was trying to troubleshoot that tuning issue. They all check great. Both sections of the can check great. I checked every electrolytic in the uh, tuner control. They all passed. All, like, 10% tolerance, which... Kind of surprised me, actually. I was expecting to find some bad ones and change them. Long term, I'm probably going to have to change them because this this thing is old, man. This, this thing's almost 40 years old. But in the short term, it's working great. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. So the hey. What are you doing? Those aren't a toy. Oh, God. Oh, dear.